Welcome to our weekly Amuna class. We are in the summer months and we are preparing now towards a new year. The end of the summer is coming to a close and I'm very excited to be able to share with everybody some good energy and vibes about what is going on in the Parshat Ekev and what's going on in our life. How can we be more real in our Muni weekly class? This is something which all of us can hopefully improve on and develop and grow together. So I ask everyone who's listening in to just take out a minute to share, to like, to all the different ways of interaction, to make a difference, to be involved in what we're doing in a proactive, positive way like we spoke last week, and to get to a point where we are discussing things that are fundamental, but also help us in a real internal way that gives us direction for life. To connect to Amuna is our weekly goals and values. And to really internalize what are our goals and values? What is the end in mind? As Stephen Covey so beautifully put many years ago, he wrote in his book, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, one of the best sellers back in the day, and all the big influencers and motivational speakers, people who guide companies and consultants, everyone honestly would admit that they've all gained something from Stephen Covey's seven habits. And the second habit, which I'm saying is connected to this second week, leading up to Rosh Hashanah, because we are seven weeks away, is connected to the end of mind. We are focusing now on end of mind. What does end of mind mean? End in mind. End in mind means our mission statement, our values, our goals. How do we develop this system of thought within that grounds us so that whatever we go through, we know who we are. So let me just give you a story that happened to me this week. I think it's something that will be a relative for everybody right now during the summer holidays and everyone in their own way has had experiences by the beach. Me personally as a young boy I remember being on the pier and being pulled in to the rough wild waters even though there was a black flag and no one was going in the, in the actual sea but we were like on the, on the actual pier part sticking out of, of the uh, beach front and as a young boy I was pulled in by a giant wave that came onto the pier and pulled me in. And the next minute I know I was being thrown around in, in the waters of the, of the sea in a wild way with the waves pounding and the undercurrent pulling. And I was a young boy and I was, didn't really know what I was doing. I was just swimming and sort of moving around. And someone, even a friend of my brother, even tried to jump in and he started to drown. And the next time I know I found myself being thrown literally towards the beach by one of the waves. And thank God they were big and powerful and it moved me almost back to where I needed to be. And the lifeguard came and saved the person who jumped in to save me. And I had somehow made my way back to the beach as a young boy. I remember this experience in a profound, deep way. And I'm sure every moment of life is a gift. And there was that moment of heavenly judgment of like, what was going to be with this person? Is he going to stay alive? Is he not? And I'm sure all the time this is happening and some level because life is a gift and every minute of life is something which we have to really value. That in itself is a value and a goal to appreciate life. The other thing was that happened this week, which is the relevance of the story, is my son also ended up in the sea. Now what happened, we were at the end of a beautiful day by the beach and he went out to just clean some of the you know, tools they were playing with sandcastles and stuff. And I don't know how it happened, but he's a young little boy, he got pulled out. So my other two sons tried to go get him and they started getting pulled out. So I, immediately they started screaming to us. So we came running in and I personally ran through and I felt like the sea just split and I was able to get to my son and help him with what he was going through. And it was a powerful, profound moment of connection because he had the waves of this world, the waves coming on top and the water pulling him in a direction away from the sea, out. And he knew just to float. This is important awareness. You just float. You don't fight. You let the, the current pull you. You don't try and fight because that would exhaust you and then you won't be able to stay afloat. And he was 
sort of riding the waves and thankfully I was able to get through the water to him and another person kindly came to my other son who I'd also pushed forward a little bit on the way to my youngest one and he helped my other son and then the lifeguard people came but in the meanwhile I'd got my son and thank God he was okay and we managed to get back to the beach and I really felt like I'd pretty much saved his life and I was just watching his face going further and further away and it was like wow this is a powerful moment this is my son his life you know I got to get the and it was just so clear to me of one the value of how much we love our children our family how much that is so essential to our being and so important and it makes other things that we worry about in life like how right now how do I appear to you that could be a thought I'm thinking but then I am who I am so, you know, in Hollywood, they put so much investment into appearing like what society considers as beautiful. And here I'm just coming. I'm a busy guy building the Amuna tour. I want your feedback. I want to grow. But the goal of sharing Amuna is more important. And the goal of living life fully is more important than how much my appearance is. Even though it is important on some level. Like, we're not going to deny that, you know, having like weird hair and like, you know, like looking strange, I mean, unless that's your image or brand. But for me personally, like it's much more important that the message of what I'm trying to do on a weekly level come over. And I think everybody on their own level needs to work on these kind of things of really appreciating life, really appreciating the people in there who are in their life, to love them, to, to have this gift of life and to appreciate it. Because let's be real, the world is pounding us with waves of noise and distraction and making us lose our direction. And it's the undercurrent and the other way is pulling us away. We don't even know where we're heading. We're heading out further and further. And if we don't have these Amuna teachings, for example, from Rav Sholem Orish to guide us, the Aleph Bait of Amuna and Betochen, the idea of having intrinsic belief. People ask me, what is Amuna? Amuna is intrinsic belief. It's on the soul level. And Rav Orish described in his videos how much Amuna is just clear clarity that Hashem is Einod Mavada. There's nothing else. There's clarity of thoughts and that will help us as we posted also about making choices, having clarity, having das, having knowledge, knowing what life's about and knowing what our values and goals and who we are, what our mission is. So we have our end in mind. This is all really, really important. And what I want all of you to, to really be really happy about, yeah, is to just know that all of you are doing something special in the fact, one, that you're listening, one, you're watching, one, you're tuning in to all the time to Rav Shalom Morish. That shows you already have a connection to his light of Amunah and his light of Betochen, this light of trust. Betochen is trust. To trust in Hashem, to know that he's our loving father right here, right now, listening to our words. He's involved. He hears my appreciation that Hashem made a miracle this week that I saved my son's life. Those other things that happened this week as well, personal, that were just miracles. And we have to go with those miracles and really say thank you as we talk about many posts and all the time. But one of the other things is that just to understand that in order to stay strong and in order to get to what we need to accomplish in this world, we have to be grounded in a real balanced, joyful way and know what our value system is, know what our goals are, and this will really make a difference. You know, I want to learn to like, one of the things I want to do is when I sell over some ideas, I want to like, just pause for a minute and just have a moment just to pause. You know, I set out the points I wanted to say and a friend of mine who I learned with recently pointed this out and my soulmate, we just sometimes have to just pause, internalize. What are we talking about? What are we doing? What is our life? We just need to just cut off all these phones and just allow ourselves just to be in the moment and be present and experience like mindfulness teachers nowadays and allow these teachings, these wise words, like everyone is going to come and meet Rav Orish. He's so present. Or any other sadik, if you've met any righteous people, they're so present and you feel that moment is a powerful, profound moment. For example, like everyone's had in their moment, like a, a moment of life-changing experience where you're just there and you're totally involved. And they say, Alam Haba, and the whole idea of connecting with your soulmate is that kind of experience, that intimacy, that moment of connection is so real, so profound and so special and holy and binding. And you're joined up with this other soul. You're joined up with this. This is a taste of the world to come. This is why, for example, the whole gaming culture, the video culture, the whole TV culture, right? Tats once explained, it's such a binding experience. It's so powerful, profoundly in the moment. So sometimes you just got to pause and just be in the moment. And I think that that will 
give you ability and clarity to be able to internalize, to do his bodhidus, to do his bonus, to think out, to, to internalize what is your value system. You should write it down. You should have a mission statement. We spoke to Stephen Covey to write it down. Write down what are your goals. My mission statement with Amuna is our future tour is obvious. I talk about it every class, about how sharing Amuna is fundamental. We have to do this. And it's not fundamental in a, in a fanatical way. It's fundamental in life to be able to live. As Rav Oresh always says, Amuna or Gehenna, it's either Amuna or intense suffering. A person has to be able to have that belief system that there's a higher force. Everyone in the, in the rehab world knows this truth. You know, Gedali offense to someone who we have teaching classes for us, and Baruch Hashem, we have now announced the new flyer for Gedali offense to in Miami and the Lighthouse Project who are hosting, and Yosef Daniel is going to be performing, and please God, Rabbi Eliezer Wolf is going to translate Rav Oresh, a new opportunity, a new translation, a new voice, and we're going to have meetings there in Miami during the 6th till the 10th of November. This is all going to be announced. We have a new flyer, thank God. And we also even have the climax of our tour that we didn't know for sure last week. And now, Baruch Hashem, Staten Island is confirmed. On the 19th of November, we're going to climax our New York experience with the whole Amuna is our future tour 2019 with an inspirational shear in Staten Island thanks to Dr. Eliezer Goodman. He also has very interesting shear him as well. And you can check it out on the daily dose divinity um, or one minute uh, thing you can see it on I've been liked and shared and involved in it in some ways so you can see it online the main point is that all of us can attach ourselves to a mission to a goal so I have my Muna tour that I'm working on that's one of my goals to share a Muna to develop a Muna to work on my Muna but I need to do it something together it's not enough me by myself my wife mentioned you know my soulmate mentioned that not only do I have to pause which I'm working on but one of the things that I need to do also is to really try and be a bit more like real, like practical. Like, how does this all come down in practicalities? So I said, we have to write a mission statement. A mission statement is practical. You have to take a piece of paper like old school days. People have chronicles or um, whatever they call them, journals. Or people have their diary or people have their, on their phones, they have all their different places. They write notes or email, however you want to do it. You have to write down your mission statement. And that will really make a difference to everything you're doing, to have clarity. So that when the waves come, which I'm right now waving on Facebook to all my friends, but when the waves of, of life come, and it can get pretty intense. All the different noises of the world come and try to pull you off track like they were trying to do myself when I was young and my son. And they're pulling you into the current and drowning you, God forbid. And what do you got to do? You've got to, one, reach out to God to help you. But you've also got to know that you've got grounded. You have a mission. You have a, have a goal. I had a goal. Save my son no matter what. I love him. I can't see this life not be in this world. He has a mission in this world. I must be part of it. He's my son. It's so deep. It's such foundational connection. This is what life, this is where life is, is felt. And it shouldn't only be for extreme moments. It should be opportunities of love and connection, communication. And to write it down, you see it so clear. I recommend people to write blogs, to do anything. Share Amuna, write your articles, put it out there, write posts, put out inspirational posts, create these beautiful posts like we have on our sites, breastofisrael. You know, breastof.co.il. These beautiful posts, these blurbs, and just different concepts that we're working through, and then discuss it. Put your energy into it, feel it. Allow you to experience what Muna is and the teachings we're working on together. This will be a powerful, profound way to have your end in mind. What is your goal? How are they going to hes- give you a hesped? How are they going to talk about you after 120? So I end off this week's class that we all have opportunities, all of us. Thank, thank the good Lord. We're here. I'm alive. Thank God my son's alive. We're all here right now in Tufshin Iron Test, about to get to Tufshin Pei. We have the opportunity to live and enjoy life, to enjoy it and have balance, to know what our value system is. And then we'll go ahead and discuss how to bring that into real everyday life in our organization and be more effective. We'll talk about that, how to influence others, to share that light and that inspiration. But the key is that the value system, the goals have to be clear. 
My goal is clear. I want a Muna in the world. I want to have true values in the world. I want to develop a, a world of unity. I've made it very clear. I'm very into unity. Unity inspires. That's my personal blog, my personal podcast. That's my booking idea. That's what I want. I want unity. So I pray for all of us to join together. We just had two bar. We're heading into Parshas Akev. We see that there's so much challenge in Parshat Akev. Everyone is being challenged by the Egel Azav of the generation money and, and, and looks and Hollywood and everything. We keep ourselves focused on our value system. We have the success. We have the new Luchas, a new start, a new beginning, a new Ten Commandments, a new renewal to the Jewish people of the world to renew our, our, our mindset, to have positivity, to not let the media pull us down, but to create a new level of media of positivity. Keep sharing your Amuna and we'll keep together a beautiful week of Amuna and strength with Mashiach Sakana Bemhe Remain Omain.